大家都很关心我跟 Rookie 的中文谁更好。那我们念一段绕口令：吃葡萄不吐葡萄皮，不吃葡萄倒吐葡萄皮。吃葡萄不吐葡萄皮，不吃葡萄倒吐葡萄油啊！<笑> Now I actually don't speak good enough Mandarin to know who won, but I reckon it was Rookie, considering the fact that Doinby just uh, tilted you know, himself. He, he, he definitely tilted himself. The challenge and yeah. then lost the challenge. That's the first mistake yeah. he made right there. He I mean, kept always the practice guessing. your own challenge. You know what I mean? Exactly. Anyway, welcome to the desk. We're back. The desk got a whole lot more Commonwealth and polls. This is Rusty, the Australian representative. How you doing, Rusty? Buddy, g'day. I'm good. Uh, yeah. I'm ready to get into this one. It's our match of the week, so you can't help but just be excited. Exactly. And Talking about the mid laners, I mean, now we've gotten to know them and who can talk Chinese better. We actually want to talk about the mid laners and actually how they stack up against each other because these guys, of course, they are the the Koreans who aren't Koreans. They're more Chinese now. We definitely call Rookie the hometown hero. Yeah, but it's really about what these two guys bring to their squad. And they're called the fake Koreans for good reason, right? It's because they really did make their home here in the LPL. They cemented themselves as star players within the LPL league whilst being Korean players in the beginning. So you can see on your screens now, Kled versus Oriana. It's a very good example of styles that both of these mid laners have against one another. And that's what makes this exciting because they're not two peas in a pod. They're not identical players. They are vast different but they're also the heart and soul of their respective teams yep. and that's why we start talking about the fake Koreans first for sure and then uh, if you're talking about styles themselves you do look at that Claire and you're like well Claire very representative recent he's played the Renekton Poppy yep. all in the mid lane as well looking at specific counters for himself and then you look at the opposite side and Rookie he's more about the clutch plays the big team fight plays so the thing is even to elaborate a bit further on Doyen B first he's gone from playing the tanks into playing the mages in his last set where yeah. they got the victory. So he's super diverse in his style, super diverse in what he's got in his playbook. And Rogue Warriors are super diverse, where you mentioned Rookie. He is the star of the show. He is the team fight king for them at the moment. And he's definitely the mantelpiece that they are getting a lot of their victories off because he comes in and he just clutches out. And I even think back to Rift Rivals in games where they oh, were yeah. winning team fights they should not have been because he was just clutching the heck out of it with his carry capabilities in team fights. That cerebral brain, that big galaxy brain that he's got going on when he team fights is just unparalleled. And he does it on a bunch of different champions at the same time. It's just like he does it on the rides. You can see in this clip at Rift Rivals you were just talking about. We saw it in the Galio, the Irelia. On this one, he's playing it on the Zoe and also just wrecking people left and right. It's just like Rookie just doesn't stop. You know, when yeah. the team needs something, an ace up the sleeve, he is the ace. He's the ace. And whether IG know they need one or not, he will provide that ace. So Rookie is actually just that good at League of Legends currently. And it's safe to say that he has still found himself in form. But when you contrast that to their opponents, Pulse Rogue Warriors, they aren't just the doing B affair, they are an entire team. So yep. we can talk about Rookie, but for Rogue Warriors, you have to talk about the two carries in particular. Exactly. You've also got to look at the mid lane, but also who is the mid lane supporting? Because more often than not, Doin is playing a tank or a support. Well, it's the bottom lane. You're looking at SMLZ, what's he bringing to the table? A whole lot of damage and really good positioning. Yeah, certainly. You get to three items, the Rogue Warriors tend to win the game just because of their team fighting capabilities. In in supporting SMLZ. At the same time, Doing B can put in a lot of work himself, can have good team fights for himself as well. This is a Cassiopeia game as an example. And Kulua, when he gets the likes of the Rakan, also able to carry for the team. So there's been impressive moments from all of the Rogue Warriors roster, including even Mouse, who has been known as the sacrificial lamb in the top lane. Yeah, that's definitely true, though. Uh, Mouse did get his time in the sun the other day. They actually gave him a carry pick for once in his life, and he actually did pretty well at that. Then he put him on the tank again. So, you still know, carried. You know, he's, he's still carried. carried. Still carried. But uh, yeah, exactly. Here's the supporting member. But then you've got to contrast who is SMLZ going to be facing. Well, it's also going to be Jackie Love on the other side. And this guy, who's painted as a prodigy, this was meant to be the year of Invictus Gaming. Part of that was meant to be them. But we've got to talk about Rogue Warriors first. Mouse in the top lane, Flawless in the jungle. Join me in the mid with SMLZ and Kalua down in the bottom lane. And Join me and SMLZ are definitely the stars of the show. As we go over to Invictus Gaming, their opponents for this best of three, it'll be Duke in the top lane. Not the shy, Ning in the jungle role, Rookie, Jackie Love, and Valand around out the rest of the roster. Yeah, indeed. And you can also see the team's stats as well. I mean, obviously, both of these two teams are at the very top of the game currently. Top of the Western Conference, Rogue Warriors. Top of the Eastern Conference, Invictus Gaming. This is literally a battle for first in every sense of the term. 
and moving forwards, both of these two teams are world hopefuls. So this series means a hell of a lot as we are still in cross conference. Yeah, the winningest teams right now in the LPL, they are on an absolute tear. Now Invictus Gaming have actually found themselves going to three games more often than not lately, but in saying that, they are still winning this set. They have still got a very good map record currently with a record of what is going on. Test Mal Z smiling. They've oh, somehow wow. managed to find a picture of SMLZ. I don't know how Photoshop. they did it. It's got to be shopped. Yep. There's absolutely no way that's real. Anyway, back to the point. <laughs> that was a pretty big distraction. Uh, Invictus Game are currently 23 wins and 9 losses in terms of map score. So they are incredibly positive. A 72% win rate. Rogue Warriors are the only team above them right now with 21 wins and only 6 map losses. They yep. very rarely go to 3 games. So when you look at this set, when you match up IG against RW, it'd be curious to see if they can actually get pushed to the wire, pushed to three games, because in my mind, Rogue Warriors are a momentum-based team. And if they get that first map victory, I think they're able to just momentum their way through, power through a 2-0. I actually completely agree with you, Rusty, because if you look at Rogue Warriors, they hit hard and they hit fast. You know, they get that game one win, and then if they innovate, it's something that they know is probably going to win that second game as well, and they'll just keep on going. Whereas you look at a lot of the teams like JD, for example, I watched them win game one, they try something completely different in game two, yeah. and then they'll usually go to a game three. I look towards Invictus, I actually think they do try and win game one, game two, and game three all the way through, but are less successful at it. So if you're just looking at those two back to back, then you would actually give it to Rogue Warriors. Yeah, I would say IG aren't necessarily experimenting in the defeats that they always find themselves in comparatively yeah. to JD. Definitely agree with you there. But if there was one thing that I was looking at Pulse to say what could get Invictus Gaming over the line, I think they need someone to go above and beyond in their team. And that person yeah. is going to be Jackie Love for me down against SMLZ. They are both going to be the stars of the show in this respective matchup against one another. Both supports have been thrown to caretaker duty comparatively to some other supports in this league. So these are definitely the players that you have to look towards. So it is the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we've got SMLZ, Jackie Love, and Pulse here. So you can guess oh. which is which. I'm not going to say a single <laughs> but thing. But I'm a top laner. But uh, I'm not saying anything further. <laughs> but yeah, if you look at these two AD carries, SMLZ always stands and delivers. He does everything that really the team needs for him. On the opposite side, Jackie Love's had some very up and down performances. You look at his two versus two specifically. And I know you can probably throw shade here and there against SMLZ, but you look towards Jackie Love, that lane dies a lot and then you get towards the mid game and it seems like Jackalov hasn't been delivering the same result as an SMLZ, an iBoy or an even an Uzi so far on the split. Yeah and you'll note that both players have a very high CS at 20 minutes, they also have a very high CSD at 20 minutes so they're able to usually beat their opponents out. Now Jackalov hasn't been able to translate that to his damage dealt where SMLZ has and it does feel a lot like to me that Rogue Warriors AD carry SMLZ is what Jackalov aspires to be. That's how it feels when you watch these two play, and it's a great opportunity for Jackie to put one back in his court. Maybe. I mean, it'd be nice to specifically get this series over Rogue Warriors. It'd be the only time they're going to be facing each other until they get back into uh, playoffs, if that even happens at all. So, important for both these two teams to get this win right here, right now, here in Shanghai, as we get into Champions League. Rogue Warriors will take away the Camille, the Alistair, and the Aatrox. Victus Gaming will lock away the Rakan, Talia, and Nocturne, and we've got some very fast first picks as well. First pick, Trundle, and Victus Gaming gonna pick the Orian and Kindred. I'm watching the fastest fingers in the East right now as Rusty is typing down all of the picks and bands for himself. Absolutely smashed my way through that before you could even finish typing. So, I'm behind now because I'm talking. Uh, Rakan is the big band that I wanna take away from this early start of the draft from Invictus Gaming. They have removed the Rakan. Balan can definitely play it. But with, with his conscious choice to take Rakan away and to pick the Orianna whilst it conflicts between Jackie Love and Rookie, they remove themselves one of the potential combos. So now I'm looking at perhaps, you know, the Morgana cropping up as another easy option, or the Alistar as the last remaining priority tank down in that lane. Yeah, very possible. I mean, definitely staples of Barrelan in the bottom lane. At the same time, Rogue Warriors will take the early rise rotation right here. It seems like if Doimbi does want to bring a rise to the table or the Cassiope when we see him play actual carry mages, he does like to pick them earlier on into the draft. Otherwise, he'll probably pick them at the end if it's something like a Poppy. That being said, Mundo's also going to be a pick up for Mouse, his uh, one true pairing. Seems like there's uh, no more iconic duo than Mouse and Mundo. There's a super early nod, however, as a response to that. They want to prioritize their top laner before the second ban phase, before it can perhaps be taken away from Duke by Rogue Warriors when those bans come across. So we'll see where they have to go now directionally because AD carries have not been seen. However, the Orianna being able to flex does open up the door to IG with target bans specifically at SMLZ. So Jin, maybe even the Sivir 
to go with it is a potential possibility here. Siva against an early game Oriana could be quite oppressive regardless of what the supports are. For sure, we actually saw uh, another Siva the other day that wasn't an SMLT Siva. Uh, Rogue Warriors are going to take away the Swain. Great pick nowadays. Also, a, another flex pick that could fit into Invictus Gaming's roster here. And Invictus Gaming. We'll see if they themselves will just take away another AD carry. I wouldn't be surprised if something like Kaiser or even just a, a big carry. Maybe even yeah, Lucian. Yeah, Kaiser works. Uh, I, Lucian's possible. SMLZ is 6 and 0 on the pick currently, so undefeated. But he's also 3 and 0 on the Siva. So I think that's their priorities here. But instead of going towards the ADs, right. they remove what could still be considered a flex between Killua and SMLZ. The Killer Whale's not going to get himself a Morgana. Yeah, not today. Stake right behind them though, looking at how they want to adapt the draft and how they want to uh, look towards their final ban. It will be Shen here in the end towards Invictus. And it's an instant lock of the virus actually coming in here for Jackie Love. And I know we were saying through a lot of this that Ori can flex, but it should be expected that it goes into the hands of Rookie. He is one of the best Orianas that you will see running around in League of Legends full stop. He is just that good at the pick, so they prioritize Oh, what? Him. As Miss okay. Fortune locked in again. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is the second time we're going to see it here in the LPL. I don't know how you keep finding these pictures of uh, SMLZ smiling, but there you go. That's going to be another Misfortune pick, and it will be the Gragas coming in as well, it looks like. SMLZ just finds ways to innovate in places where he shouldn't. This is a new champion for him as well, and he has played by far the most champions in the AD carry position currently. So I think this is number 17 <laughs> for him in terms of champions that he has played in that bottom That's lane. ridiculous. They're going to put a Gragas there as well, most likely into the support role unless the Trundle flexes. We'll have to find out where each of them go as it's finished. Now, Gragas was indeed the lock-in here for Rogue Warriors and Invictus Gaming looking towards their final pick. Expecting it to be, of course, a support down in the bottom lane. Now, what do they want to pair with the Varus? Uh, Tam Kench is available. I mean, you could go the Fiddles if you're going to be aggressive and win lane, try and poke them down. Yeah. If you want to just match, if let's just say it's a lethality Varus, right? That's an option that you could do. Of course, they're going to lock in the Braum here. Braum going to be much more protective, is a very good pick into Gragas mm -hmm. to deny the ultimate utility, prevent the engage tools from the cast being there, and setting yourselves up in a very strong, you know, hybrid between defensive and offensive. And I think that's actually the entire composition of IG described in a nutshell. They have got yep. a Nar that can go forwards or backwards. They've got a Kindred that can save someone or go offensively as well with the dashes. Orianna with shields and shockwaves. Varus does the same thing. So overall, IG, that's a lot of flexibility coming out of five fairly standard picks. They command protect. They also command attack. This lineup, we'll see if they can make it work against Rogue Warriors though, because we've learned anything about Rogue Warriors over this split and since the inaugural split of the spring split. Uh, they strike fast, they strike hard, and they strike over and over again until you die. And uh, this is a composition where I feel like they could definitely do that. Misfortune has a lot of early game prowess in the bottom side of the map. And uh, they will be constantly looking to translate that pressure and just keep on coming at Invictus Gaming until they break. That being said, look towards Invictus and typically look towards their lane strength. So hopefully they shouldn't buckle underneath this pressure. You know, normally when you look at Rogue Warriors, you call them, say, like the Wodes or the Barbarians. They'll just throw themselves at you and there will be casualties in the process of doing that. But with the speed, with the aggression, the precision they actually have, it's very hard to stop their aggressive moves. But not so much anymore are there even really casualties seen. They've refined this style, this 2014 Chinese aggression that everyone knows and loves that has become a, a hot phrase for international viewers on the LPL. They have made it a little bit better. They have optimized yep. and they have almost hit that point of perfection. Rogue Warriors, not many things in this league can stop them. However, IG, I would say could be one of those. Well, Frusco and herself passed over the uh, the belt. Uh, I actually guess it was a picture frame at the time, but uh, they are the Chinese aggression team. Passing that mantle on from the old OMG. And now with this composition, they can do a lot with this one. Definitely in your face, close range, mid range. Down to the RW mantra. And you can see it's a packed house here in Shanghai, ready for our match of the week as we get onto the rift. I'm gonna give it over to the audience. Probably the loudest crowd chant I've actually heard just straight up. Uh, it's just like, oh, majority to uh, Rogue Warriors here tonight. That sounds like 300 of the 500 crowd. No, Victor's game even louder. 
So I don't know how we've gone past capacity, but that's what it sounds like. Certainly feels that way. Maybe everyone's just excited and they're going to chant for both teams. IG just a little bit louder here. We are still in the Shanghai Battle Arena. Back-to-back -back sets to be seen here. So thank you for enjoying that first best of three prior to it. That was one hell of a set. But we're in our match of the week now, Pulse. We are the big boys have come to play. Oh, yeah. Top of the table clash. The most top of the table currently as well. This is the legitimate the first versus first top yeah. of the table clash. RNG and EDG falling a little bit to the wayside. JD still there. There's a lot of top teams in our region, but these two, one and two. All right, taking a look at the keystones. It's going to be a pressed attack from Gnar. I know in that last series, we saw a uh, grasp Gnar actually in the top plane into a, into a Jace. Uh, this time around, we're actually going to see pressed attack once again. Uh, mid lane, we're seeing pretty sound stuff. Uh, going to be domination second, actually, from Doinby. Flawless has made his way into the bottom side of the map, though. He's gone red buff right into gank. That being said, there has already been a ward placed down, so Victor's Gaming are playing back. But look at this pressure already exerted by the bottom lane here from Rogue Warriors. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense that they would place early Vision Ning now looking as well. They're going to get a collapse on the Flawless, potentially. But Clue is here. Oh, that's Snake Knight going down. Kukusa blows close to this one. Jackie Love's action forward to find it. Follow through. It's going to be enough damage right here. That's auto attack. Jack Jackie Love finds first blood. And the Varus gets the kill as well. Red buff to boot in the bottom lane. Flawless is not going to be able to push into the river. Is completely removed from the area. Now this is not the marked Scuttle Crab. It is just pinged on the top side. And I believe that's immediately where Flawless will go. But still that first blood is everything and more for the bottom lane of Rogue Warriors. They're really confident now after that one. Absolutely huge for them. SML is actually just getting blasted by Jackie Love in these trades. He can take a look. He's got red buff now because he just got that off his trundle. So this is now a disastrous situation for the bottom lane of Rogue Warriors, especially after they were pushing back that bottom lane of Invictus Gaming. They still somehow managed to roam up and push them back. Mid lane, Rookie just handing it to Doinby as well. It's not the optimal recall timings there for a Rise. Having the teleport getting pushed out is okay. Nice pressure in the bottom lane as well. Once again, Kalua is hitting the mark with all of his body slams. Now, in the mid lane, you're looking at about 17 CS in the cannon. In that wave, that will give you the tier and a control ward in the recall back. So you can see that he was about four minions short, and that means that he's going to get the Dark Seal. He's not going to upgrade his tier just yet and has to waste that teleport. We said how good Rookie is, and we said that this will be his pick on Orianna, and you can see why now. Yeah, three and one so far in the pick here in the summer split of the LPL, and uh, averaging 35.7% of the team's damage. Always brings up a big performance, but really doesn't matter what he's on. We just showed earlier, you know, taking a look at all his performances. Really doesn't matter what you put him on, he will come out with a big performance. That being said, bottom lane, Kalua just again pressuring. That is the strength of the lane at the end of the day, having this Gragas and the Misfortune. Yeah, you're it's never just going to be on that first back because the fact he's got that early vamp step definitely going to help him to sustain as this lane goes on. But that's the thing, right? He's sustaining. You're never yeah. going to really beat a Misfortune in, fortune in lane as Varus, especially not a Comet. E leveled Misfortune and has two points in that now as well, so maxing that one out first with a Doran's Ring. So it's all about sustain, all about yep. pushing you down. And then every time Make It Rain connects, Kalua threatens with a Body Slam and with the kegs that he can throw at you as well. So really oppressive. But by having that first blood, you mentioned the Vamp Scepter, that keeps him in the lane for a significantly yep. longer amount of time and really does set him up to push through and persevere through that early pressure. Frankly, it just helps him lose less. Uh, Flawless is already here in the bottom Flawless lane. Knows, though. Nick is actually coming down here. Yeah, very much aware of the fact, but they're actually instantly going to go on to Jackalove in the bottom lane. Taking so much damage, instantly dies underneath the pillar of Phil. Kalua finds the kill credit. I mean, Jackalove has no flash. They use it to get the kills. Neither does Valan. There's no chance in even saving the AD carry of IG. And suddenly, Rogue Warriors, they see Ning. They know he's just clearing a ward. They know he has no intent of going towards the lane. They just wait that little bit extra of time and they find the easy gank opportunity. Flawless already in the perfect position. Yep. So effectively into a three versus two, and he insta gib as well onto that AD carry. So finding his revenge in the end, bringing it to one to one in total. And Victor's game is still lead because of that first blood gold. Top lane, you can actually see a gathering storm come out of Duke here. He's also gone for the <laughs> precision first on the triple tap. That means we all know what's happening here for IG. Just some late game insurance policies oh, yeah. from the NAR in terms of his runes. I would be surprised if Rookie doesn't also have the Gathering Storm in his primary there in Sorcery. Having that summon area already available. I reckon. Uh, Doing Bivo, low on mana, low on health. You can tell that he wants extra gold. Yeah. Like, he is still here. He is falling down about 14 CS and he is potentially about to get dove by an Orianna. So he's hanging around as long as he can. 
maybe just to get his ultimate, maybe just to get one more minion, and that'll give him that item upgrade, but he can't. Yep. Way too much pressure. He got Nida in the end, which is unfortunate because he just ended up wasting time, didn't get the experience, didn't get the gold. So he'll go back to base, he'll find himself the tier of the goddess, absolutely, but won't be able to find extra wards on top of that. You can take a look. Uh, Sorcery going to be primary, of course. Uh, also, Gathering Storm on top of that. Uh, and Domination Second taking Cheap Shot. And Predator. Yep. The Relentless Predator used to move faster when you've got those takedowns. Curious to see that as a misfortune. You've got enough move speed as it is. With Strut. Yep. yep. You could go for the Ingenious Hunter for summoned items and CDRs like that, but at the end of the day, I think you'd probably just want the, uh, the healing one. Yeah, typically. Super yeah. surprised that he's gone for Predator. That's the one is Ravenous Hunter. That's yes. what, yeah, Ravenous yeah, yeah. Hunter. That's the one. That's the badger. Yeah, but I guess he's just like, well, I'm just going to be all about, uh, you know, my skills and my ultimate when come team fights. There so are... Really, I want to position. Yeah. Uh, and when you think about positioning, right, why would you go this over, say, the healing? You're against an Orianna Shockwave whose positioning is crucial. Yep. So your positioning around that is just as important. If you've been attacked, there's a chance that you are, you'll be slowed down as well, maybe not able to activate that strat. Do you want to highlight the fact that uh, Ning right here, take a look at his solo kills, eight currently leading in junglers. That's just a jungle role. I know that I believe Yuki is the one leading in the mid lane, but uh, that's still a lot of solo kills for a jungler. Yeah, but uh, three is third. So that is, is yeah, definitely it's quite a, a lot. big difference, yeah. Rusty. Got the two junglers here today. Now, for now, Ning's going to be able to head into the enemy jungle, find himself a mark on this Grump, so that's going to be nice for him. Uh, maybe looking at the top lane. Of course, there's been a bit of an island up here, but that's only been good for the Gnar. In fact, there's been so much pressure on the bottom side from Flawless. He's actually kind of left Mouse out to dry. He's actually about three or four waves behind the Gnar in the top lane. Looking towards the mid, though. Shockwave's on. Early shockwave. Ning over the wall. He's got the wolf thrown down. He's jumping out of the zone. Double flash over the wall. The lead coming in from Rookie, but he's found himself an extra troll. It's going to be a one for one trade as the teleports come down. It's going to turn back Ning. into a two versus two. Oh, just kidding. It's only SMLZ. And Ning, he's in way too deep. SMLZ gets himself a kill. The SMLZ is the one who teleports. Mouse does cancel his, and they were very surprised that it even got completed. Perhaps miscommunications there from IG. Duke canceling it because Mouse did. You can see the pressure in the top lane right now that is berserker greaves rushed with an executioner calling a lot of damage and pressure from that nah but at the end of the day smlz comes in and ning has no reason to use his lamps respite yep. if he wanted to buy time maybe but that's a super long cooldown to use and he's just ticked over to six so he calls it a day acknowledges defeat goes back and gets himself an item I mean, almost certainly there's going to be more skirmishes happening when there's a rise in the game. You're probably looking towards the bottom lane or maybe even a dragon fight slash looking at something like a blue buff or a red buff. So why not save the summon spell, uh, or rather save the ultimate and the summon spells at that and uh, be ready for the future fights. You can see that of IG's previous nine sets, seven have gone to three games, and that's usually indicative of the inconsistency of that team. We'll get to see the replay in mid lane again. Now, the Shockwave is on. And doing B, I thought he was dead to rights about five seconds before this, but the flash over the wall, even then, didn't think he'd get the full combo out as much as he did and yep. survive. But that trundle pillar was outstanding from Flawless. Completely locked Rookie into place, and Ning is just dead. Pretty much it. Teleport didn't come through uh, from the Invictus Gaming side. Uh, yeah, just unfortunate in the end. Uh, Ning actually just He's wasting in this bush. Yeah, he absolutely has. Flawless is going to find him. Still waiting on the pillar. Let's take a look at the round warp. And Kalua coming in from the bottom lane. But Flawless is low himself. Lamb's just going to help both of these combatants. But in comes Rookie from the mid lane. Down comes Bao Lan, But his ally's already dead. Shockwave brings the Gragas back in. And Kalua now under attack as Bao Lan looks for the lockdown. Perfect timing, but Rookie still has to dance. Flash away by Kalua once again. And it will just be the one kill. And it's super clutch individual plays, honestly, across the board here. Rogue Warriors barely surviving. IG hitting the spells, but they cannot navigate around their opponents. The flash used at the last second. The stopwatch used brilliantly as well. And they're able to just navigate such a difficult to fight composition. Rookie also has to be super careful and they cancel his recall. And from the starts of potentially a very bad early game here for Rogue Warriors, they have just brute force their way into a good little comeback. A little bit awkward here for Mouse, has to pop the ultimate once again. This is the second or third time I've actually seen him have to use the ultimate just to survive the onslaught coming in from Duke. Uh, it's actually really bad that he's continues being hit by Duke while trying to regen since he does have the executioner's calling. Uh, Ning here contesting his own Raptors because Doinbi is here stealing them, of course. 
And Zing will finally get his Raptor back to himself as well. So that's going to be nice for him at the very least. But we're 4-2 to two in terms of kills. Even though both Blood went to Invictus Gaming, Rogue Warriors, they never stop. They are relentless. This it is how Rogue Warriors play. It is important to note that they still have the slight gold advantage here in Invictus Gaming. The farm through top lane is going to be a big deal. And in mid lane, whilst they are getting kills onto Doinbi's back, it's still a big CS lead for Rookie on that Orianna. So at the end of the day, things are still going quite well for the side of IG. They're the type of team that win lane, win game. They have perfected that idea and they are still achieving those ideals. They are just mis-executing around the rest of it where Rogue Warriors, very good at forcing. They've been doing exactly that. That's fair, but then it's just like, how long is that going to last, right? Because if you're looking towards the Victus Gaming, like, win lane, win game, maybe it's going to result in the top lane tower and first tower of the game like that, purely to Duke. That's a good one for him, especially after, you know, his performances in the last split or so. So, yeah. find this one pretty much in this one versus one. Ning now getting caught on the uh, bottom side, or should I say flaws, because he's the hunter, and he just gets blasted by the dissonance. Don't be in this one versus two. L unloads on Rookie, but he simply doesn't have the damage to 100-0 him. That's just going to be a kill over there to Invictus, plus top lane tower at that. Yeah, just a clean kill for IG on the backside. Doing B tries his hardest, but Flawless had face checked too much damage too quickly and did not have the flash to dodge the shockwave. So he's just going to go down immediately. You mentioned the top lane. Well, it also translates to the bottom side now where a Drake falls. What we're really waiting for is the intervention of the 2v2. If SMLZ can really come in and join his team, he is a big misfortune. It's entirely possible things start to turn around. But as it stands, if the current game state continues, IG are creeping further ahead. I mean, that's it really, because I was just about to ask the question. It's like, if this continues, you know, will Invictus Gaming get anything tangible? And within saying the same sentence during that, top tower falls, a kill in the mid lane, and now Invictus Gaming are actually pushing all over this, all over the map, essentially. Um, Duke's going to find himself back in the top lane, not quite ready for some lane swaps just yet. Especially because it wasn't bottom tower that cracked first. He's not really building to swap unless his duo lane wants to swap somewhere. No, he wants somewhere. to track the Mundo until the end of the earth, to be honest. Yeah, you can see he's rushing Blade of the Wrong King. So it's not going to be your tanky Frozen Mallet this time. It is win lane, beat that Mundo into the ground and make his life miserable. That's Duke's game plan here. Channeling the Shy, almost, in how hard he is going to try and carry this one through. Yeah, true enough. Uh, Rogue Warriors. See a lot of games like this for Rogue Rise, I'll, I'll be honest. Maybe not as brutal as this early game has been uh, in terms of Victor's Gaming's last two to three minutes, but Rogue Rise do often fall behind in the early game and then look for those mid-game sucker punches. You know, they will continue to find creative ways to look for those fights and then to find those crucial team fights in the mid-game, especially in this meta when, you know, a team fight equals a Baron equals a Dragon equals possibly the game, if not a pivotal part of the game. So important for them. It's a big lead in the top lane. That's really yes, all indeed. where all the gold is. You'll note that there's a slight lead in the bottom lane, which is just that he's not at a deficit. That comes from the first blood they picked up. And Jackie Love is sustaining his way through the lane. As farm goes, it's still controlled by Rogue Warriors down there. That's the one winning lane they've got. Now, Rogue Warriors as a team, we said they are more the team fighting style. They are the flash play. They make something super quick, super spontaneous, and they make it work incredibly well through their team dynamic in 5v5. They are just so seamless and work in a beautiful harmony. Now, SMLZ being the only winning lane is not surprising because of that. They don't usually draft for their winning lanes. They draft for the mid-game team fights. Yeah, uh -oh. Especially not bot lane. It's gonna be round warp, but a bit of a fake out here. See if he can, uh, you know, fool Rookie into using an early shockwave. Yeah, Flawless not actually able to make that jump. I think if Flawless was able to, they might have gone in. I don't think it's worth it to flash in to a rise warp. Probably not. Call that one a day. It's just yeah. an ultimate use. Yeah. And it's what really good. is a Rise ultimate use? It's not a lot. It's not a combat stat that affects the game. It's super useful later when Rise ticks over to 11 and Baron stands up. Or reclaims his pit, I should say. Yep. He doesn't really... I don't know if he stands. I don't know what exists below the ground. Oh, really? Haven't really thought about it. <laughs> I don't know really who, who we can ask either. There's that's definitely got to be some like, concept art out there yeah. of Baron's <laughs> lower half that you just can't see. Actually, no, it slithers around. It does, we... yeah. We can actually see it because he has his tail, right? Yeah. He has a tail. He has a tail. But he has claws as well. Why well, does he have claws the halfway of his body? Because normal snakes don't have that. It's a bit weird. 
Anyway, Nick around the corner. It's going to be an absolute collapse from three different angles. Three prong of assault. Oh my god, Nick actually can't move right now. Join B instantly dies. Floor's going to caught out on a concussive blow. It's going to be a second to Ning. And there they go again. Bao Lan actually with a very deep seated flank there through his control ward vision. Now SMLZ and Kalua, they have found the Bao Lan, but they're the ones who are mispositioned. Zaiji start to collapse. Yeah, they're trying to fight their way out of this one. Kalua, he's already been hit up by the concussive blows. SMLZ returns fire. It should be enough for them to get out of dodge right here, but it's the bottom lane, which was the real objective for Invictus Gaming. And they've really just turned online in this one. Move towards the mid lane, take that one down. Move towards the bottom lane, make a play. Take out all Alta turrets at 16 minutes. And this is your standard IG in a winning game. They are so good at controlling the tempo of the map. They are so good at using Rookie and Ning in tandem to make plays happen. It's very rare that we get to see something like this. And you can see the Team CSD at 15. They are winning lanes hard. Oh, meanwhile in the jungle, it's going to be a hop away from Duke. He's close to going mega, but he's going to die over the wall. SMLZ finds the kill. That auto attack was already channeled onto him, unfortunately for Duke. He thought he had the out, so did I for a half second there. At the end of the day, SMLZ has finally grouped. This is the moment that you're waiting for if you're a Rogue Warriors fan. He has finally grouped up with the rest of his team. That is a massive misfortune. And they've got the team fight capabilities there because of him. But it is a misfortune into an Orianna. Yep. And they have the ranged engage tool of a Varus as well. So it's not going to be an easy to navigate thing by any means, especially as that gold lead creeps further up but it is possible. It's going to be tough. You know, it's not going to be a misfortune ultimate to open the fight, that's for certain. It might be an ultimate that comes in after the shockwave is used or maybe a flanking bullet time, but uh, he's definitely going to have to be creative in the ways that he looks for these ultimates, the very least. Yeah, I mean, um, the one thing they do have going for it is the trundle pillar. Uh, being able to force summoner spells so easily by just having the pillar firstly That's true. is a very big deal. And if they don't have summoners, then the pillar guarantees a full channel. So we'll have to see how that one does play out. Remember that stopwatches are a very good denial tool to the Misfortune Ultimate. We've got Invictus Game moving into the bottom jungle right here. Balan's just going to approach and take a look at three members of Rogue Warriors. They're hungry right now, but it's going to be Barrel that's going to be just in the You're middle of the pitch. Award, Princess. Uh, join B over the wall. He's still tossing overloads. And it's all about this choke point right now. There's a lot of wards going. To, okay, there's another ward. Invictus Gaming really want this piece of territory and they really want the red buff. It's fighting for whatever is available and knowing that Rogue oh, Warriors gets it. will contest them in response. Rogue Warriors are not a team to just bow down to their opponents. They usually step up and take on the challenge. Right now, Herald Summon Fuller is still clearing wards. Oh, he's caught out completely on this one. He's super dead. Rookie gets the kill. On his lonesome clearing wards, maybe he expected all of IG to group up mid lane, but they didn't need to really. The Herald was already just going to slowly start to push. They had the 10 oh. second window. I mean, this is just a series of unfortunate events, Rusty. I mean, they placed down the Plinko Shelly in the jungle. You don't know if she's going top lane, mid lane, or bot lane at this point, but she finds the mid lane. Flawless dies on rotation. Still going to be a double charge. He's going to be caught on this one. Dummy's already dead. Bullet time's good. Find squad, but the door's up. Managed to block the rest of those bullets coming onto his team right there, Bao Lan. And Mouse flashes forward. He's found Rookie chasing after, but there is no more chain potential. That's a Meganar. And with the teleport coming down from Meganar, who is seizing the top lane tower, it's a win 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 situation for Invictus. Yeah, the only thing they lose is their jungler in Ning. Now, they lose him because he was crowd controlled before he could place the ultimate down. A brilliant body slam from Kalua is the final nail in the coffin there for Ning. But at the end of the day, IG, they still win pretty comprehensively here. Only a small tarnishing of the record through their jungler dying. The Varus chains connect, the shockwave connects, the Braum ultimate hits, and then the only saving grace is exactly that body slammer from Kalua. So you take the small victories. This is oh, a big loss. Mouse in the top lane, just simply caught out. That's a solo kill going over to Duke. Flawless turns up to the play, but it's way too late. And everything, the stars have aligned for Invictus Gaming. About a minute ago, Mouse used his flash in the mid lane to headbutt Rookie. I remember. Now I would warrant that that was a mistake. And that mistake has cost him his life now by not having the flash to get away from a Nah. So these two are going out of joint. Mean, is Doimi's winning. currently though. definitely winning that fight. Brings up the round warp. Oh, yeah, he's definitely tuned to go in in this one. Find himself command protect into the dissonance. And we'll find the kill, but There's he's one versus people. four. So I admire the effort. The last samurai goes down. But uh, that's just a kill, and ultimately it was just for just for keeps more than anything. Just felt like he just wanted it. He angered the boys, but he also had no way out, so he kind of did have to commit himself to it. Now, what he does get is the stopwatch from Rookie that has now since been removed from his inventory for a amplifying token. 
So that is a big win, taking that away from the Orianna. It also gives a kill to Join B. Now, if anyone on the team is going to go one for one and you'd be okay with it, is SMLZ or Join B for the forthcoming team fights when they happen. So when you actually look at the state of the game, Flawless 0-4 having a pretty rough day. Top lane Mouse, not really able to influence the map, but let's just say it gets kept at a 4v4. Then the people who have money are the ones that are getting those kills and are the carries of the side of Rogue Warriors. That's really the only thing they can grasp at right now. It is indeed, and you take a look at what that means in terms of items as well. SMLZ actually sat on double penetration items in the mid lane. You've got an item and a half coming in for Doinbees, so there is still a chance you know, Rogue Warriors do pull off miracles, and they do it often. It's not even like a once in a blue moon thing. It's like maybe twice a series type of thing. So don't count them out just yet. But Invictus Gaming, this is probably one of the cleanest games I've seen from them in the entire split. Definitely spells a good signs for them approaching the end of the regular season here, especially against the top of the table in the Western Conference of Rogue Warriors. It's just funny that the one thing that always stands out to you when you're watching a Rogue Warriors game, you know, any other teams playing against IG right now, you're 7,000 down, you're like, oh, Lord, have mercy on that other team's soul, you know, like, they're just hard losing. Rogue Warriors always in with a chance. Now, Baron has been started, but it's early teleports. They should get there in time. This will be the fight. It's dropping low, Rusty. It's down to 3,000 HP already. That's going to be the chain of corruption down to floor. Zones him away, and it's just all the zoning ultimates. Well, the IG are misses. good, but they're still looking for it. They get... A Gragas down, he's already dead. And the flanky teleport comes oh, in for two. two. He finds three on the sweep right there. And despite missing all the ultimates, they have so much back in the tank. Join me, the only man to live the tail. And they're able to just clean house from Rogue Warriors there. Four dead, only doing be alive, but he hasn't really got anything in the way of Baron clearing. These waves will be able to push forwards. IG, they will get themselves at the minimum an inhibitor here and a very clean Baron and team fight. I'll be honest, I mean, that caught me by surprise. It definitely caught Rogue Warriors by surprise. They were like, well, they missed the shockwave. The fish are coming in for Brom. There's no way they'll continue coming at us. But they get the pick onto Gragas and they run them down. Inhibitor off the back of Baron. Doinby trying to enter recalls right here, but he's just being annoying more than anything. Actually, I don't know if he even wins this. He's going to be choked down by this kindred. Still chasing him down. Jump over the wall. I'm coming back for you. Ning gets another solo kill. And gets a mark from the Rise. I think we have our answer there, ladies and gentlemen. Ning can, in fact, kill Doinby. B. Now three and five, the Rise definitely in desperation stations. Like, there's nowhere else that he can really do. There's nothing he can contribute to the map. Varus hits the ultimate. Nah is set up then to engage. And we pretend that shockwave never happened because it's a celebration. There is just the largest Nah running around killing them. But speaking of large Nahs, I mean, it just doesn't stop, does it? And Flawless is dead in the jungle trying to take Red Buff. Mouse is now under attack by Duke. I mean, the demons that haunt have been laning phase now haunting them throughout the rest of the game. It's 23 minutes in, it's still, this is usually laning phase for a lot of teams to be honest. And it's about to end here for Invictus Gaming, taking everything away from Rogue Warriors. Take down the bottom lane tower, got a massive minion wave crashing into the base. And they've got five men strong as well. Take a look at Ning, he's actually flanking on this kindred. <laughs> that was a Varus ultimate that just missed the dance in Kalua. So we'll, we'll take the small victories here if you're Rogue Warriors. Kalua's having another bit of a, a belly bounce. Really enjoying himself. He knows the state of the game. IG, they have just slacked their opponents and they are looking for the end. Whoa, shockwave, right almost enough to take him out by itself. Bullet time comes through, but the dodge into the record, into the respite is going to be good here for Invictus. Join B, doing what he can onto the side, mainly trying to clear out this minion wave, but it's super's knocking on the front door. And the door is already half dead. Take a look at Rogue Wise. This last chance to loom, but the mid lane's already dead. Mouse chases after Ning. He'll get revenge on this one onto the Kindred. But it's Invictus Gaming he was still chasing after. Jackalo gets one and he's still standing on delivering. He's actually going to carry on farming while he gets the health back and he still stays alive. Invictus Gaming completely destroyed here. Rogue Warriors in game one of the series in Shanghai. No miracles this time. No comebacks available for Rogue Warriors. And just another day in the office here for IG. They come in to play. They come in to win and they absolutely smash their opponents in game number one of this best of three series here in Shanghai. No problems whatsoever. Again, to reiterate, that is one of the cleanest games I've seen from Invictus Gaming all split long. I mean, that's what they're gunning for. We said win lane, win game, but usually not that well. Uh, you know, Rogue Warriors usually find themselves a good fight, a good skirmish here and there. And yes, they didn't go quietly, but in the end, they did go. Uh, it, multiple fights back to back. And while they rivaled Invictus Gaming in terms of kills, 
when it actually came to objectives taken, it just all fell away from them. And I do think the Rogue Warriors will be able to go backstage and fix a lot of the problems that they had. For me, it is the draft more than anything else. You have the rise into the Orianna, so you know that you're going to have a rough start to the laning phase. And not only have you done that, you've picked Rook uh, Duin B's rise into Rookie's Orianna, who wins lanes. So little things like this, I think Rogue Warriors can definitely explore coming into the next game. They can fix it coming into the next game. And their only winning lane was the bottom lane, and they yep. couldn't actually use it as a pivot point because IG's vision control and vision denial through the red side of the jungle was just immaculate. Yeah, and I think also got to pay a bit of attention to the top lane, you know, because Duke, he's had a bit of a rough spring. In fact, he's had a bit of a rough time on Invictus Gaming, just straight up, you know, if we're being honest. And But I think recently he's really been stepping up. The Shy's obviously been coming back onto the roster yep. ever, ever since Rift Rivals. Uh, but that was like one of the best performances I've seen since 2017 coming out from Duke right there. Just smashed the lane, took first tower by himself. Yes, he had jungle pressure, but I mean, he still just did everything he could with the matchup and more. Yeah, he had a winning matchup, but he yeah. won it super hard. He didn't just get a CS lead, man mouse was actually being forced to ult constantly and he pushed really hard with advantages that he had. Not only was it press the attack, it was Berserker Greaves rushed with an Executioner's Colic. So if you think about it, what's Samundo going to do once that's completed? Yep. And the rest of his map is losing because there is no perceived pressure from the Trundle. That's the biggest thing there, right? IG is such a good team at winning ga our lane, winning game. The reason that they can do that is because Ning finds the enemy jungler. Yep. If all three lanes are winning, your, ro your job, your role as the jungler could be one of two things. That could be die of the winning lanes, you know, snowball leads, or it could be to just find where the opponent jungler is. And this is one of those instances where the answer was dive. It's also one of those rare instances where Rogue Warriors, they're able to trade. Yeah, I mean, this was really good coming out from Flawless, but also good at the same time from Rook. He came in with, uh, came in with the uh, Flash Predict while also simultaneously running away from the Trundle. It was well played in terms of mechanics and heads up positioning. Uh, that being said, I feel like Flawless constantly getting caught out in this game, whether it's in the bottom jungle, the top jungle, right here as well. To be fair, bloody system. They both went diving, they both got eaten. Uh, but in the end, it was the Herald coming in on top of that, and that was just a massive push in the mid lane following uh, many just bizarre errors coming in from what is usually a really solid jungle. And I think a lot of that may actually, like the word bizarre is hard to explain in this game. I think most of it will be the vision. That's the thing that yeah. you can't actually see when you're watching it live all of the time. But IG's vision control, pretty much every time Rogue Warriors attempted to rotate anywhere, there was a ward that saw them, and then there was an immediate reaction yeah. and counterplay from IG. That was the thing that I really felt through that game was just super well orchestrated from Invictus Gaming as a 5v5, just navigating their ward control. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it just seemed like Invictus Gaming had Rogue Warriors number, to be honest. Uh, and, you know, we both said in our, in our pregame that we were saying that pretty much this looks like a Rogue Warriors, you know, set to lose. I mean, it's actually likely we actually see a 2-0 here today. You know, Invictus Gaming, while they are near undefeated, they have had a lot of three game sets recently. And also in the way that they win them, it's just that gut feeling, you know, when you watch the team, it's just like, this is a little bit sloppy here. Team fights have gotten better, but it's always been an issue for them. You look at who they're fighting today, the team fighting team in Rogue Warriors, but we never really got there. By the time we got to team yep. fights, they were like a 10k deficit. That's the thing with IG. We've always said that team fights may be a weakness. We just, you know, through the whole spring split when they were dominating everyone they played against, we still said that team fights may be a weakness yep. for them. And only until the very end of the split when teams could challenge them through laning phase did we get to see that team fighting. Now, Summer IG so far, of course, one set, one game in this best of three, but generally speaking, their team fights have improved, but we've lost a lot of that laning strength that they've gotten. At the end of the day, Rogue Warriors, they never got to see it in this game. This is a throwback to the IG that we know and love from Spring, the dominant early team. But they've still got the team fighting there. And a lot of that was Duke and was actually Jackie Love hitting yeah. a lot of spells too alongside Balan. That's what you were saying, you know, uh, back at the start, Rusty, is we need to see a, another part of the map start carrying from Invictus, because, I mean, you look at Rocky, and he's, he's you know, a god in the mid lane, great in team fights, great in the lane itself. He's actually bodying uh, Doinby for a large portion of that early game. But then, who else is going to step up? Jackie, though, I did think did, but I think Duke at the same time, his teleports were immaculate. You look at the top lane, the pressure he had. Also Ning and the jungle. I mean, we saw a lot of flashy solo kills. Uh, personally, I'd probably still give Man of the Match to Duke because he was consistently good throughout the lane I'd phase, the mid game, to. and the late game. Yeah. Um, so the way that I, yeah, I was going to say, the way that I know that the system works is probably going to go to the flashy player, and that was Ning. So he made a big play in the jungle. Congratulations, Ning, but hashtag justice for top laners. Uh, I mean, Ning played fine. Eh, uh, I, I, you know what? Like, you know what? I, I just to, heard Rusty. If I was to go down yeah, the hold list, hold on, of... hold on, Rusty. The shy's coming in over Duke. Okay. Duke just murdered the top lane. What is going on? Not a lot. What about you? 
Unbelievable. We're going to take a short break. When we get back, we're going to have uh, the shy coming into the top lane for Invictus Gaming. This summer, IG has a lot of things that need to be proven. Please, everyone, be patient.